Hey guys, welcome back to Sisters Talk TV. This is going to be another Basketball Wives review. So we have a lot of things to cover, especially on this episode and last week's episode. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we get started, please be sure to like this video and also subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. And check us out on Instagram at Sisters Talk TV. So last week we were introduced to two sisters and they are going to be the new castmates of Basketball Wives and their names are Nia and Nairoria Darcy. So you know they're they were introduced to Jackie, Jen and also OG and OG shares with them the colorism situation that is currently and what's going on in the group. And you know, they share their experience with colorism, especially growing up in the South. They're from Memphis, Tennessee. So they're, you know, they share their experience. They're very understanding with OG. And you know, they sympathize with her and also empathize, empathize with her as well too. So, so far my opinion about these ladies are, they are, you know, they seem to be very understanding. Um, they seem to, you know, understand like what is actually going on. So they're cool in my book um, from last week's episode, what they represented. So, you know, so far so good. Okay, so then we also get Jackie and Malaysia. They made up, thank goodness, because these two ladies, you know, they started the franchise Basketball Wives LA. Well, they were the original before, you know, the Evelyn's and Shawnee's and Tammy as they came back to LA so you know it's really good to see them make up and be friend be friends and have that conversation so so far so good and another thing was Jackie really wasn't the one that called Malaysia kids those names it was Kristen that actually relayed that information back to the group so I'm not really understanding why Malaysia was so mad at Jackie and not Kristen or Evelyn. You guys, if you know, let me know. Um, like, why was Malaysia so upset with Jackie when Jackie wasn't the one that called her kids those names or called her kids dirty? It was actually Kristen that said it. Kristen was the one that relayed that information back to the group. So, you know, of course, Jackie and Malaysia, they made up. So Jackie feels like, you know, if me and Malaysia can make up, you and OG, um, Shawnee, you and OG can have a conversation. Evelyn, you and OG can have a conversation. Evelyn was just like, you know, it's a different situation. You know, they're current, they currently have a lawsuit going on against each other. So they cannot have, you know, they can't really be in the same room or they can't really have conversation amongst each other. So, so it is a different situation, but certainly I feel that Shawnee and OG can have a conversation. Okay, so, you know, the, they're introducing the new girls. Jackie brought the new girls, Nia and Nairoria, Nar Noria, over to the collective's house to, you know, meet them and get introduced to them. So, you know, they're talking about um, pretty much like what their tie to the group is. And we find out that Nia was actually dated one of Phoebe's ex, who is Lance Stevenson. So that's her tie to like basketball. She used to date one of Phoebe's ex. So, and it, all the girls are like, oh. I don't know if Phoebe is going to like this or I'm not sure how this is going to change. Like, why is every time someone is introduced to the group and they kind of talk about how they are tied to pretty much the group or someone into the group, it's like the ladies are so skeptical and just like, I don't know how this person is going to feel about this. Like, who cares? Like, who cares how like why it's just like it seems like they are already kind to trying to stir up the pot and i'm just kind of like you know nia take note of this like look how the ladies are asking you these kind of questions because they're gonna go back and tell phoebe 
oh, there's a new girl that was introduced to the group. And they're going to tell, relay the story in a way where it was not how it was relayed to them. So they're going to fabricate a few things and stuff. So just be mindful of that, especially with these ladies, you know, be very mindful. They like to get in your business um, and just kind of just trying to, they like to stir up the pot. So just be very mindful, okay? Okay, so, you know, the ladies, Nia and Nyror Noria, they're kind of, you know, they want to, like, um, take a tour of the house. So, Shawnee's like, okay, you know, let me show you the house. So, she shows the ladies the house, and they start to talk. And, you know, Shawnee wants to get to know the ladies a little bit better. And I felt that this scene seemed like a, such an interview scene, like an interrogation. Like Shawnee was on the other side of the couch. The two sisters were, not, were on the other side of the couch. And it just felt like, like an interrogation, like a job interview. It just was not authentic. But <clears throat> Shawnee, okay, so the ladies, um, Nia and Nori, now you, okay, I'm not sure what the other one's name is, but it's Nia, I know that, and Noria. Noria, Noria, or Nora, Noria. So she tells Shawnee like she had a conversation with OG and OG really opened up to, to them. And she talked about her experience in grade school, how her teacher told her, you know, she would never amount to anything because of the color of her skin. And Shawnee just had such an epiphanic moment. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she felt this way. Wow, OG is really starting to really crack. And I'm just like, um, you know, I really feel like I have to have a conversation with OG because of, you know, I can't believe she went through that. And she was just like, you know, I've never had a one-on-one -on -one conversation or sit down with OG because every time like I see her or I'm around her, she's always arguing with the other ladies or arguing with someone else. I'm just like, well, I mean, you've had a conversation with J Jackie, Malaysia, Shawnee, and sorry, Jackie, Malaysia, Evelyn, Tammy, and who else? Of the other ladies, you know, that, that's been on the show. And they've always got an argument with other people, you know, so, but, you haven't had a conversation with OG because you every time you see OG, you she's always having an argument with other people. I'm just like Shawnee, that's just BS. You're just she Shawnee is doing everything within her power to make herself look like she is, you know, recollecting, um, just pretty much recollecting like everything that was said about her. The allegations about her being a colorist and Evelyn being a racist so she's just trying everything within her power and it's just like it just seems so fake and it just seems so unauthentic and I think the ladies um you know they feel that you know Shawnee should have a conversation with them and I just feel like Shawnee she just doesn't care like Shawnee does not care all she cares about is the show. Also, her good pal, Evelyn. Yeah. So, she just doesn't care at all. Um, yeah. And this whole scene was just really, really fake. But, she, you know, kudos to the sisters for making that effort. But when they relayed this to OG, so when they go back to the other house, you know, they've met the collectives. And they seem to be getting along with the collectives. But when they get back to the other house, so they tell OG that, you know, we had a conversation with Shawnee. We told her ex your experience, pretty much what you told us. And she's willing to have a conversation with you. And OG was just like, you know, I don't want you guys to speak for me. You know, she wants to be able to relay her story and tell her story how she feels is best. And this is my two cents about this conversation. I do agree with OG, you know, you never want anyone to tell your story for you. You always want to be the person who tells your own story because you don't know how that person is going to tell your story or if they're saying what was said um, to them. But I also feel that OG, 
OG did come a little too abrasive and a little too harsh with the new ladies because they seem very like, they seem like really nice girls and really sweet girls. So maybe she, maybe it wasn't, um, maybe it was just the tone of how she said it. Like she was talking to them like they were her children, like they were her kids and not like grown women. And I get it that OG isn't, like, she is um, going into law. She is in law school. So she has a very, like, authoritative, like, um, tone. A very, yeah, like an authoritative tone when she is talking to someone. And it did come off like she was talking to her kid instead of talking to other grown women. Um, or a... Yeah, so that's what it, it seemed like when she was having a conversation with these two ladies. And I think they picked up on it and it started to kind of rub them the wrong way. We're going to see that throughout the episode. And this is kind of how they have kind of in a way chosen to side with the... I'm not going to say their side. Okay, let me just not say they're siding with the collectives, but... It definitely was the tone how OG did talk to them was kind of, um, it did kind of put them, you know, in a standstill on maybe this is what the other ladies are talking about. So I could definitely see um, their opinion of, of that. But we also get Jennifer who is so, she just seems so annoyed by OG. She doesn't want to be in the other house by OG with OG. And... You know, last week she had a conversation with Kristen and pretty much it seemed like she's starting to side with the collectives. And this is where I, this is what I think. I think that back in like, I think that Jen probably had a conversation with the producers and to make it seem like, okay, it's not everyone else. OG is a problem. You know, I think she definitely had a conversation with Shawnee. Like, you know, you should come join the other house. And, um, you know, we want to have a conversation with you. We want to welcome you. Let's go ahead and move past this. Let bygones be bygones. So I do think that Jen had a conversation with the producers. And she had a conversation with Shawnee. And I, I feel like this is leading up to, like, Jen's excuse to leave jackie's house and go to the collective's house like she doesn't want to be um around og and also she would rather and this is also going to lead her lead to her making up with evelyn so i do see later on in season jen and evelyn are gonna make up and then it's in like og is going to be on an island by herself making it seem that, you know, it's not OG. I mean, it's not the ladies. It's OG, you know. So I do think that this is definitely a producer manufactured um, drama that is about to, um, you know, be presented later on the season. And it's going to be the castmates versus OG. Yeah. Um, I know that British Williams is supposed to be coming on. I don't know, like, if she's going to be a normal cast member. Um, but I know that she is supposed to be on the show. So let's see how this works out. Because I'm kind of tired of this whole drama with, between OG and the collective. Let's see, like, other people, like, other people's storylines. Because I feel like everyone is using this whole store like og and evelyn as their own story like no storyline no one is having a storyline for themselves like kristen okay we get malaysia and jackie shawnee what is shawnee's storyline um what is jennifer's storyline you know um yeah like i just feel like everyone is kind of, is trying to ride this whole wave so and other people can like so they don't have to dive into their personal lives or their personal stories yeah. so jennifer and og they have a conversation og's making like a little like a handbag and she said that she says she was telling jennifer that you know one of the ways she got through the pandemic and covid was getting in tune with her crafty side so she's like decorating this basketball with glitter and um gems and stuff 
And Jennifer's telling OG about how she let um, a guy that she was dating, one of her boyfriends, drive her car and he never brought her car back. Like he's pretty much stole her car. So she wants to make a documentary about that and present it to a network. And OG's really not listening. She's like, oh, look at my handbag. So Jennifer felt that, oh my, OG is so self-absorbed that everyone else is, is able to listen to, you know, her conversation or, you know, her situation, you know, um, hear her out. But when it comes to other people, OG does not want to hear other people out. And so it's always all about OG, OG, OG. So she feels that OG is really self-absorbed. And I did feel that, I don't know if it was edited, editing, but I'm, I do feel that, you know, OG could have really, you know, heard Jen out or listened to Jen, like what Jen was saying. It did seem like OG was really ignor um, ignoring Jennifer's concern when they were having a conversation. So it did really seem self-absorbed. So I'm not sure if it was editing, but if it is, um, if it wasn't editing, it wasn't right, you know. Because Jen was an ear. Like, she did listen to OG's concern, especially when it came to the other girl. So, I think that OG should have gave that same, like, respect as well to Jen. When Jen was talking about her own issues. Um, concerning, like, her personal life. But, like I said, I'm not sure if it was edited, editing. But if it's not, um, it was not right. So then we move on to, okay, so Kristen and Malaysia, they want to come over and talk to OG after hearing that OG kind of broke down. So I'm just like, why does it take OG to break down to see like what was, what was the problem and her issues concerning you guys? Why does she have to cry? Why does she have to be vulnerable? You know, why? But I, sometimes because OG is such a strong woman and she does, you know, it's hard. She's pretty much unbreakable. Sometimes I kind of, I do, sometimes a little bit of vulnerability goes a long way. Sometimes you kind of do have to be vulnerable in order for other people to see, you know, what is, what is going on to see like a different side of it like a different side of the situation sometimes it does take a little bit of vulnerability so do you guys think that should have should og have to be vulnerable in order for them to sympathize with her or understand like her stance about the situation should she have to cry should she have to be vulnerable why can't she just like you know tell them like this is what's going on um, with her and listen to her. So should she have to be vulnerable? That's a quite I, I want to know that. Like, I want to know what you guys' opinion about that is. Oh well, your opinion on that is about. So Kristen and Malaysia, you know, they are, you know, they want to come talk to OG. And I just feel like okay. I feel like Malaysia is very authentic. Like, I think that she does probably want to understand OG's stance on it. Kristen, I just feel like she's just doing this. I, do, I like, I do not think Kristen is being authentic whatsoever because she also makes smart remarks like, do we need to bring Vaseline? Which are not, it's not even funny. Oh, pray for us. Like, if you are really being sincere about wanting to have this conversation, why are you also making smart remarks about, oh, pray for us, or let's bring back, um, do we need to bring vaccine to the other girls? Like, it's like she wants to fit in with Shawnee and Evelyn so uh, bad. And I feel that Malaysia is probably in a space where, you know, since her and Jackie have made up and she kind of sees Jen she it seems like jen is starting to wiggle her way back into the group and i think that malaysia is just like you know well where do i stand if jen comes back if they allow jen back into the group so malaysia starts to kind of put the pieces together and i feel like she probably does want to have, genuinely want to have a conversation with og to kind of um hear her stance on it but i also feel like it's just kind of a numbers thing like a numbers kind of game um but i do think malaysia is being very it seems genuine 
about the situation um, concerning OG um, more than Kristen does because OG was more res like M Malaysia's delivery to OG was just like, you know, well, what did I do? You know, and it seemed very genuine. And you can see OG's becoming very receptive of Malaysia's concern. And she can see that Malaysia's being genuine compared to Kristen. So the episode pretty much ends with OG is starting to kind of fold a little bit. OG's starting to, you know, break down. And the episode ends on that. So next week's episode is pretty, I think it's not going to be, um, we get the storyline between N Noria and Phoebe, you know, so we get that storyline and we also get one of the other, one of the, I think it's Nia is about to come to blows with OG, like, it's too much going on. It's OG, OG. It's like OG versus everyone. I don't know. Like, I'm not, I, I, I don't know. Like, oh, this is going to be a long season. Um, Yeah. But let me know what you guys think. Did you guys think it was a good episode? I know I missed out. Um, I know I forgot a lot of, a few things about Phoebe and Nuria and their, like what Phoebe pretty much told Evelyn about Nor Noria about her being a stalker and stuff and how she's a stalk BB and all that kind of stuff. So I know I'm, I'm forgetting a few things, but I just think, I didn't think those things were really significant to the episode. But a few things I want to say. I do feel that in a way I think that the producers probably did have a conversation with Nia and Noria about, about OG and also feel that Jennifer wants to be back friends with Shawnee. And Evelyn so bad that she's using OG to as an excuse for her to go to the other house. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. Um, that's what I feel. Um, concerning Jennifer and OG. I don't think she is that annoyed with OG to a point where she is just like so so annoyed. I just feel like she's just she just wants to go back to the other house and she just wants to be in a better place with Evelyn and Shawnee. So yeah, so that is my opinion. Thank you guys so much. Please make sure you like this video. Also subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thank you guys once again. Peace, love, and blessings.